Greetings fellow humans and this is T Ujedi. Today's episode is brought to you by Earl Grey Roybus Blend from Spice and Teas. This is actually from my trip to New York City and I'm pretty sure I actually had this this one before in another video but I, I can't be completely sure so uh, I'll have to buy new teas so I can I can I can show new things. So this is customary. hot tea for uh, actually a hot and humid day in Puerto Rico but it's rainy so yeah it's you know it wants to be cold but it's not gonna be cold so it is what it is that's Puerto Rico so today's episode is to talk to you about something that's coming over in one week today is May the 13th next Friday is May the 20th what does that mean if you're in Puerto Rico it's a Puerto Rico Comic Con and I'm gonna actually be there and this video is talking about uh, why I go there, uh, what I'm going to have this year, and expectations and highlights. Um, uh, first off, why do I go to Puerto Rico Comic Con? People have asked me this because since I, I, I do books, what am I doing at a comic convention selling books? Well, first off, if you read comics, that means you read. Uh, second off, uh, I'm a geek Rican, which means I'm a Puerto Rican geek, and I I've gone to conventions before, and I, I and I ask myself, wow, why why isn't there why isn't there any of this uh, any any writers uh, doing anything else? So I decided to <laughs> to do it my way, and I went there two years ago. It's pretty nice. I went there last year. It was better, and and so I'm trying to control expectations, though. Uh, it's been a really nice experience just interacting with people and people from Puerto Rico, and actually people that, who visit uh, from from the states, and they go like, "Oh, you, so you you you're an indie author?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And you're from Puerto Rico? Yeah. And you're writing English? Yeah. Okay. And then they they browse a bit, and and they like what they see. And I've been able to connect with a lot of people out of local, local and international fans thanks to the Comic Con. So I think it's great. It's a, it's a good, uh, good opportunity to get exposure and 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 talk to, at least in my case, like-minded people. And I don't think it's you. You would think it's not the best place for extra wide thing, but until you try, you don't know. Uh, in my case, uh, I've been very fortunate and very lucky uh, because uh, people ask me, why do I take poetry collections to the Puerto Rico Comic Con? It's not just enough that I take books, but I take poetry collections. And I, 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 I've been able to, to sell a couple of, quite a few uh, poetry collections because people go like, oh, that's different. They, they're able to browse it and they go like, oh, that's nice. I'm going to actually take it. I'm, and I'm super thrilled. I like doing different things and I like variety. Uh, and people seem to like variety too, so that's great. So th there's that. Uh, the other question is, what am I gonna? What are my expectations? I'm actually very curious and a little bit nervous because there's two things that I'm trying out, and they are the the new materials, the the new works that I was able to publish in May. Uh, May, April, and May have been interesting months, writing wise. Although they've been very positive months. Uh, firstly, uh, I was able to publish on, on, on Mother's Day, to continue the tradition, uh, the, my first Spanish poetry collection. I am actually quite curious to see uh, what response, if any, that collection gets and what people think of my, my poetry in Spanish because obviously it's, 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 not, it's not the same type of writing. Uh, it's not the same type of brain that's doing the thinking as well. It's the same brain, but it's not the same type of thinking or the same type of writing. So I'm curious, and I, I really do hope that that it holds water. And it's called Pensando en Metáforas. And it's it, you know it's it's slices of life. It's very personal, and it's it's a very personal take on several things and several issues. So it's definitely something that I. I hope people enjoy it. Obviously, I'm not going to put something out there uh, if I don't think people are going to enjoy it, or if I don't enjoy it. That's something to talk about in a, on another occasion. 
Uh, the other thing I'm actually very curious about is the bilingual collection, something that I've been uh, talking about for, for a long time. And to talk a bit about it, it's called Twenty Vente, uh, which is it's a bilingual play of 2020 as in vision. Because le leading a bilingual life and living bilingually, uh, you, you, you have two ways of seeing pretty much everything. And the more languages you have, I'm sure that you know the more complicated your thoughts can be. But at least in my case, when I when I write and think in Spanish, es completamente en español. And and I wanted to really push myself uh, with that collection. It has uh, essays, short stories, and poetry in both English and Spanish. And basically, it's it's me pushing myself for as much variety. Uh, as as possible and and just to show a range because if you see my record collection <laughs> I like a variety of things you know from metal to classical music everything in between jazz bossa nova uh, punk rock and you know I'll give pretty much anything a shot uh, and with writing I want it to be pretty much the same I like to I like to, to, to take on a good challenge and and to venture into different things, writing-wise or, or topic-wise. So I'm very, very, very curious to see what people think of that collection and how people respond in general, because not everyone is bilingual. So uh, people would say that would limit people, but I did focus on making it worthwhile so that er and what's offered in each language is worth the, the price of entry, let's call it that. Uh, again, it's all about variety. And the short stories one is like really fantasy. Uh, another one is is, is slightly fantasy, and uh, and another one is actually pretty pretty real life. It's about a boxer, and that's actually a, one of my w one of the stories that I've most enjoyed uh, writing. I'll talk more about that when I talk about the collection, though. Lastly. Yeah, it took me seven, seven and a half minutes to get there, but book two of The Human Cycle, Shadow of a Human, will be launched uh, in the Puerto Rico Comic Con. I'm very, very curious and very excited to see the, what, what people think and if it's a worthy follow-up. Put a lot of love and effort into it, and I think that uh, as a writer, uh, I've, come, I've come a ways. And I really hope that people enjoy it as much as I enjoyed uh, writing it. It's a much more cohesive and concentrated effort. The first one took about seven years. This one took two years, two and a half years, something like that. And I'm very, I'm very curious to see the response of people. I, I don't know. I'll talk about about that more on its own video. So yeah, expectations for for the Puerto Rico Comic Con. If you have, if you do cosplay, please pass by my booth. I I love meeting, greeting, and interacting with cosplayers. I love doing it with people in general. But I, if if you can spare uh, some time to come over to my booth and and make an author happy, I would love to take a picture with you and your costumes. Uh, if I can have something specially for you, I'll do it. If not, because time is a little tight, and so is the budget, uh, sorry, next time, or maybe I'll do something digitally. I think that's a good possibility. So let's keep in touch if you're a cosplayer, or if you're anyone who's interested in my stuff. Pretty much anyone who comes to the Comic-Con, um, yeah, uh, follow me on Facebook, and I'll make sure that it's worth your while, I promise. So obviously I'm looking forward to the cosplayers, obviously I'm looking forward to uh, Japanese sweets and just to see what people bring to the table I think that there's gonna be I, I don't know I think it's I don't know how many exhibitors uh, you can check the the Puerto Rico Comic Con a website to verify the amount but it's it's pretty crazy uh, but I am very curious to see what my my geek brethren uh, bring bring to the fold I think it's gonna be cool I, I don't think I know it's gonna be cool so yeah uh, I'm looking forward to that, to just to talking with people, people that I, I met uh, two years ago, people I met last year, uh, new people I'm going to meet this year, and just just to say hi. And It's a very, very, very enjoyable experience, at least for me. 
even though odds are pretty high that I'm going to lose my voice, I don't care. I think it's cool to be able to talk directly to people and, and, and get their feel for it and, and, and have them read a bit of, of, you know, have them, you know, in front of you reading it and, and browsing a bit of the books. I think that's cool because uh, you see the reactions of people and you know when, when you did something right or you, you caught someone's attention and that, that to me is awesome. Um, and I, I, I've made a concentrated effort to have something for everyone. I'm sure that I, still I'm gonna I'm gonna hear people say, "Oh, I, I would I would have liked to see this." I'm gonna jot notes and take down notes. So if there's a request, by all means, you know, drop it. And what else? Not much else. I think pretty much anything else we're gonna find out uh, at the Puerto Rico Comic Con. So stay tuned. I'm gonna try to upload videos. I'm definitely gonna be tweeting and posting pictures on Instagram. So. By all means, check it out, and if you're in town, please, swing by. I'd love to say hi. So until next time, peace, love, and Mikey Rolls.